Welcome back to the lecture Introduction to German and International Company Law. In this third and last podcast, we will take a look at the European Company Law. At first, we will shortly examine the European types of companies. Then we will take a look at the freedom of establishment and its influence on German company law. Apart from legal forms of national laws, the European integration has introduced some supranational forms to the world of company law. We will now look at these European legal forms and have quick insight into the Societas Europea, SE, as the most important specimen. The European Union has enacted multiple regulations to create legal forms for companies under EU law. The most notable of these distinctly European legal forms are the European Economic Interest Grouping, EEIG, the Societas Cooperativa Europea, SCE, and the Societas Europea, SE. The introduction of these different types of companies is supposed to further the economic integration of the common market and facilitate cross-border cooperation. Especially the movement of the company from one country to another should be made easier. However, the European legal forms have not developed much dynamic in reality. One of the reasons for this rather modest rate of success is that relevant EU regulations often refer to the national law of the state of the incorporation for specific provisions. This so-called renvoi weakens the supranational character of the companies and thus eliminates one of the advantages of a theoretically neutral legal form. A proposal for the establishment of the Societas Privata Europea, SPE, as an alternative to a limited liability company like the GmbH was set to remedy this flaw. The proposed SPE did not require a cross-border element and had a much comprehensive set of provisions to minimize the need to refer to national law. However, it faced steep criticism because of feared competition for the national legal forms and was subsequently withdrawn because of lack of political support. The only European legal form which gained some importance is the SE, which is the European equivalent to the stock company. Some notable companies have chosen it as its legal form. For example, the car rental company Sixth, the insurance company Allianz, the Axel Springer Media Company and the holding company of the E.ON Group. In 2017, there were around 2,700 SEs in the European Union. I will give you just a quick overview about the formation and corporate governance of the SE because the details would by far exceed this format. The primary goal for setting up the SE was to facilitate cross-border mergers and to facilitate the establishment of intra-European groups. The SE regulation was introduced in 2004 and is far less comprehensive than the original proposal from 1970. The regulation contains around 30 referrals to national law and thus there is considerable space for national particularities. The regulation gives four methods to form an SE. First, SE can be formed by merger between two companies which are active in at least two member states of the EU. Second, it can be formed as a holding SE for a group if at least two of the group members are governed by the law of different member states. Third, an SE can be formed as a subsidiary in another member state. Fourth, an existing public limited company like the German AG may be converted into an SE if it had a subsidiary governed by the law of another member state for at least two years. In general, it becomes clear that the SE requires a cross-border situation to legitimize its existence. The formation of an SE requires a capital of at least 100,000 euro. Concerning the corporate governance structure of the SE, we can remember what I said about the possible types of corporate governance as a monistic or a dualistic system 
and the cultural differences concerning this topic. For every SE, only the general meeting of shareholders is obligatory by law. The regulation provides for some matters for which the general meeting is solely responsible, for example, the transfer of the registered office or the amendment of the SE statutes according to the regulation. Concerning the management structure, the member states can provide for a two-tier system with a management board and a supervisory board, like in the German AG, or for a one-tier system with a single administrative body as in Anglo-American publicly traded companies. If a member state has no provisions concerning the structure of a public company, it should facilitate both ways of corporate governance. However, Germany has mandated a two-tier system akin to the AG for all publicly traded companies, so that the SE in Germany is very much like the AG we discussed earlier. Now, we will take a look at how the judiciary, especially the European Court of Justice, ECG, also shapes European company law. We will focus on the freedom of establishment and its importance for the modern company law in Europe. The freedom of establishment is provided for in Article 49.54 in the Treaty on the Functioning of the European Union. The abbreviation in English is TFEU, in German it's the AEUV. It is one of the so-called fundamental freedoms of European law and primarily binds the member states of the Union. The fundamental freedoms empower individuals and companies to set aside actions of the member states which interfere with their economic activities in the single market. These freedoms and the jurisprudence of the ECG, which concerns them, have been a major force in the European integration process. Article 49 TFEU provides, within the framework of the provisions set out below, restrictions on the freedom of establishment of nationals of a member state in the territory of another member state shall be prohibited. Such prohibitions shall also apply to restrictions on the setting up of agencies, branches or subsidiaries by nationals of any member state established in the territory of any member state. Freedom of establishment shall include the right to take up and pursue activities as self-employed persons and to set up and manage undertakings in particular companies or firms within the meaning of the second paragraph of Article 54 under the condition laid down for its own nationals by the law of the country where such establishment is affected, subject to the provisions of the chapter relating to capital. Article 54 provides, Companies or firms formed in accordance with the law of the member states and having their registers office, central administration or principal place of business within the union shall for the purpose of this chapter be treated in the same way as natural persons who are nationals of a member state. Companies or firms means companies or firms constituted under civil or commercial law, including cooperative societies and other legal persons governed by public or private law, save for those which are non-profit making. To understand these two articles, we first need to look at the background in legal doctrine. As long as there were internationally business connection and a developed company law, there were also two theories on how to determine the legal status of companies and especially which national law governs their establishment, existence and relations. These two theories are the incorporation theory and the real seed theory. They belong to the realm of private international law and determine the applicable company law. 
According to the incorporation theory, all matters concerning the constitution of a corporation are governed by the law of the country where it was established and registered. If the company changes its seat afterwards, the applicable law does not change. This theory is the prevailing doctrine among common law jurisdictions, including the United Kingdom and the United States, but also Switzerland, the Netherlands and Russia. Because no actual link to the territory of the incorporating state is necessary, it is possible to go forum shopping and choose the most favorable legal system for one's own purposes. It also creates legal certainty because there is no possibility that the legal framework for the company changes. On the other hand, the incorporation theory also makes it possible to establish pure letterbox companies and has a huge potential for abuse. The real seed theory, on the other hand, determines the applicable law according to the place where the central management and control is located. It is established doctrine in most civil law jurisdictions of continental Europe. The real seed theory assumes that the country which will be most affected by a company's activities should also be the one to govern its affairs in legal terms. A good example for such considerations is the participation of workers in the governing bodies of the corporation, the so-called co-determination in German Mitbestimmung. This is firmly entrenched in the German legal system, which allows for a high degree of participation, while UK law is more focused on shareholder participation. The long list of ECJ rulings can also be understood as a conflict between these two theories and the interest of some member states to promote their legal system and others to protect their own legal principles from lower standards. Because of the eminent role the ECG plays in shaping the extent of the freedom of establishment within the EU, we will now look at the most important decisions in that regard. Only when one sees the historical development of the case law, the current state of the European company law can be understood. Please do not be discouraged if you don't understand everything the first time listening. Those rulings have all been very controversial and have been interpreted very differently in different countries. As a first step, to rationalize the decisions, it is helpful to divide the cases into two general groups. However, it should be noted that there are multiple other ways of systematizing this jurisprudence. The first group can be labeled moving in cases. Here the ECJ concerned itself with national legal requirements which hindered companies incorporated under the legal system of a different member state from operating under its original legal form. Here the names of the relevant cases after the party that claimed freedom of establishment are Santras, Übersehring, Inspire Art and Vale. The second group on the other hand are the moving out cases. Here the situation is reversed as the home member state stops a company incorporated under its law from moving its seat or its legal status to the jurisdiction of another member state. The leading cases in this group are Daily Mail, Cartesio and most recently Paul Put. We will now look into these cases in more detail and examine the facts and the ruling of the ECJ. We will start with the moving in cases. In the Centros case of 1999, two Danish nationals, Mr. and Mrs. Bright, established the Centros Limited under UK company law. However, the company's economic activities were only conducted in Denmark, and Centros wanted to establish a branch office there. The incorporators clearly stated that they had established the company under UK company law solely to avoid the minimum capitalization requirement for Danish limited liability companies. The Danish Commercial Registry considered this to be an unlawful circumvention of the Danish minimum capitalization rules 
and so refused to register the company's branch office in Denmark. It argued that European law cannot be used to avoid national legislation, which itself is in conformity with European law. The European Court of Justice ruled that the freedom of establishment guarantees the right to set up branches in other member states. It does not matter if the company was set up with this intention in the first place or if it was done to profit from the more liberal company law of another member state. This cannot amount to an abuse of freedom of establishment because such a view would be detrimental to the establishment of the single market. This means that a member state cannot discriminate against a company that was legally formed in another member state when this company wants to set up a branch office. The ECJ did however state that it is possible for member states to implement other measures than refusing to register the company to avoid fraudulent practices by foreign companies operating within the member state. Next we turn to the Überseering case. The Überseering BV up in Slotten Venotschap was founded in the Netherlands and its shares were brought by two German citizens. The company bought a piece of land in Germany and engaged Nordic Construction Baumanagement GmbH, a German company, to refurbish a garage and a motel on the property. However, Überseering then sued for damages because of allegedly defective works. The German courts dismissed the action because Überseering had moved its real seat to Germany and had not gone through the proceedings to register as a German company. Here we see the consequences um, of the real seat theory that we discussed earlier. Because it was no longer a company of the Netherlands and not registered in Germany, it did not possess legal capacity and could not bring legal proceedings in Germany. So the opinion of the German court. The ECJ ruled that if a company that is lawfully incorporated in another member state exercises its freedom of establishment in another member state, that other member state is required to recognize the company's legal capacity and capacity to be a party to legal proceedings, which it enjoys under the law of its state of incorporation. The next leading case concerning the freedom of establishment in moving in cases is Inspire Art from 2003. A Dutchman uh, established the company Inspire Art under the laws of England and Wales to deal in art objects from a branch office in Amsterdam. He requested the registration of the company's Dutch branch office at the Amsterdam Chamber of Commerce and Industry in the Netherlands. The Chamber took the position that specific Dutch rules for foreign entities registered in the Netherlands were to apply to the company. Dutch law defined such formally foreign company as a capital company formed under foreign legal systems which carries out its activities entirely or almost entirely in the Netherlands without having any real connection with its state of incorporation. As a consequence, Inspire Art Limited would have been required to use a company name indicating its forward orig origin and comply with the minimum capitalization rules for Dutch limited liability companies. The ECG ruled in this case that the Dutch regulations concerning foreign companies were contrary to European law. A foreign company is not only to be respected as a legal entity having the right to be a party to legal proceedings, as ruled in Überseering, but rather has to be respected as a foreign company that is subject to the company law of its state of incorporation. Any adjustment of the legal form to the company law of the host state is not compatible with the European law. The regulations can also not be justified in respect to the interest of creditors because it is already clear from the limited 
that it is a company from another jurisdiction and anyone who deals with it, with it willingly takes on the risk of lesser capital requirements than under the member state's legal system. Finally, we turn to the Valo ruling of 2012. The case concerned a cross-border conversion of a company established under Italian law, Vale Construzioni SRL, into a company incorporated under Hungarian law, Vale Epitesi KFT. Vale wanted to move both its statutory and its real seat to Hungary and stop doing business in Italy. Under Italian law, it is possible for a company to convert into a company established under foreign law. Consequently, the company was deleted from Italian commercial register. Vale applied now to the Hungarian authorities for registrations and stated in its application that the Italian company was the predecessor to the Hungarian company. The commercial court denied its request because according to the relevant statute, a non-Hungarian company cannot be listed as a predecessor in law. The Hungarian Supreme Court referred to the ECJ for a preliminary ruling concerning the question if the freedom of establishment prohibits national legislation of a member state which prohibits a company incorporated in another member state from transferring to the member state and continuing its operation under the law of the receiving member state. The ECJ handed down its decision and ruled again that a member state may restrict a company governed by its law to retain the status of the company established under the law of the member state. However, the member state of origin of that company cannot prevent a company from converting itself into a company governed by the law of the other member state to the extent that it is permitted under the law to do so. This means that cross-border conversions falls inside the scope of the treaty provisions on freedom of establishment. This concerned the member states of origin Italy and was in itself not problematic in this case, as Vale did not continue to operate under its Italian legal form, and Italy allowed for it to be removed from its register without liquidation. The main point concerned the law of Hungary and its restrictions on incoming companies. If the law of the member state to which the company moves does only provide for the conversion of domestic companies, it treats companies from other member states worse. This can deter companies from moving their operations to other member states and thereby impede on their freedom of establishment. Because of that, the restriction imposed by Hungarian law was unjustified and was ineffectual due to the supremacy of European law. Now we have taken a look at the leading moving in cases. We have seen that the ECJ has greatly promoted the freedom of establishment and fostered mobility of companies within Europe. It established the prevalence of the incorporation theory over the real seat theory. A company established under a member state's legal system and not losing its legal capacity later has to be recognized by the other member states. Now we turn to the leading moving out cases. With that, to the other side of the coin. How does the home state member deal with situations in which a company established under its legal system moves to another jurisdiction? The main issue here was for a long time whether these questions fall within the scope of European law or if it is a purely domestic matter. The first leading case in this respect is the Daily Mail decision of 1988. The Daily Mail PLC wanted to move its de facto head office, the tax residence, from England to the Netherlands because of the more favorable tax regime there. At the same time, it planned to remain a company subject to UK company law. Daily Mail did this in part to sell many of their non-permanent assets and to buy its own shares from the proceeds. This transaction, transaction would have triggered a significant tax under UK law. The UK Treasury Department refused permission for the transfer of seed, 
which is necessary under UK law. It demanded that Daily Mail should sell a part of its non-permanent assets before initiating the move to the Netherlands. Daily Mail then initiated proceedings before the High Court of Justice and claimed that the freedom of establishment in European law gave it the right to transfer its central management and control to another member state without prior consent from the tax authorities. The ECJ rejected that claim. Rejected the claim that the consent requirement was an unlawful restriction of movement. It concluded that this issue falls outside the scope of the treaty provisions on freedom of establishment. It held that companies are creatures of the law of the member state of origin. Because of that, the member state of origin can determine the incorporation and functioning of the company. You can already see here that the moving out cases, the ECG was more reluctant than in the moving in cases to apply the freedom of establishment to the actions of a member state. The next in line is the Cartesio ruling. Cartesio is a limited partnership established under Hungarian law. It sought to transfer its statutory and real seat to Italy while retaining its Hungarian legal form. The Registry Court rejected this request because Hungarian law demanded the dissolution and winding up of Hungarian company. In other words, Cartesio was not allowed to take its legal form visit to Italy. The appeal court asked for a preliminary ruling by the ECJ. The ECJ did not overrule its daily mail decision and ruled that Hungary could implement such measures. It again based its conclusion on the very vivid creatures of law doctrine. Therefore, European law allows member states to restrict the transfer of the central administration of a company abroad, if the company wants to keep its legal form. The difference to the moving in cases like Übersehring is that in those cases, the member state of origin allowed for the export of its legal form. The ECJ did not go so far as to expand its jurisprudence on moving out cases. The most recent and probably the most controversial decision by the ECJ concerning the freedom of establishment is the Paul Put decision of 2017. Paul Put Vykonovstvo SPZO was a company established under Polish law. It moved its statutory seat to Luxembourg, converted into a limited liability company under Lux Luxembourg law and renamed itself Consoil Geotechnik Sau. The authorities in Luxembourg registered the moving of the seat, the conversion and the renaming of the company. However, the company did not move its real seat and did not conduct genuine business in Luxembourg. Therefore, the Polish authorities refused to remove the company from the register until it had been liquidated in Poland. The ECG ruled that Poland could not demand the liquidation of a company that moved its statutory seat to another member state. The freedom of establishment also encompasses the right of a company legally established in one member state to convert itself into a company governed by the law of another member state. The only condition is that the law of the receiving member state allows for such a purely fictitious link to be sufficient for a conversion and the registration with its authorities. This ruling, in fact, establishes a free choice of legal forms within the single market, because any company can now change its legal form through a cross-border conversion or merger. The ECJ also stressed that this can be regulated to combat, for example, tax avoidance, but it is not sufficient to simply state the abstract danger there needs to be an actual danger proven by factual evidence. The ruling is very controversial and has garnered a lot of criticism. It is feared that the free movement of the statutory seat will be a loophole for forum shopping, for example, in respect to worker participation and tax avoidance. In the future, companies could freely choose the legal system they want to operate under with no regard to their actual operations. 
if one member state like Luxembourg allows this. This could lead to a regulatory race to the bottom, similar to what was happening in the United States for more than a century, with the most recent example being Delaware, that is very popular with companies because of its very liberal regulations, as we have discussed in the first podcast. The long-term consequences of the ruling cannot be predicted at the moment, but it has already prompted an intense discussion about regulations on the European level to stop tax forum shopping and other unwanted, unwanted consequences like an excessive use of letterbox companies. We arrived at the end of our lecture, the three-part podcast to uh, the general principles of German international and European company law, the forms of partnerships, the forms of cooperation and the influence of the European Union company law. I hope you enjoyed listening. I hope you enjoyed watching.